everybody, Sponge Murphy here. How you all getting on today, right? And welcome back to the newest video in the Let's Build Carrion Empire box video series. And if you guys want to stay updated, make sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and you'll be kept up to date with all the projects that I'm working on right now. And uh, for this week's video, the goal was to paint up 10 crypt hearts. Well, I only really got 9 painted up, but I explained that when I switched it down. And I made a very, very bad mistake with two or three of these, which kind of... Once I've seen these, it's a hobbyist mistake. I don't think a lot of other people will pick up on them. But once a hobbyist sees these little mistakes, they're like, Arr! and that's what I was like when I spotted them. So it kind of said to me, like, slow down a little bit, take your time. You've been painting an awful lot the last couple of weeks. So just focus a bit more and don't let these little mistakes happen again. But I had a lot of fun painting these guys, and hopefully you won't go too harsh on me when I show you what these little mistakes were. So let's switch down to the table view and have a look. Alright, so here are the Tin Man unit. Now the guy on the right, he is all grey, he's the leader. I haven't painted him yet because as soon as I get a chance to sit down and get this guy painted in one full session, I'm going to be doing it for a painting tutorial. So I'm just going to leave him to the side for now and concentrate on the nine that I got finished. Now these guys are a lot of fun to paint up and the main thing I've caught with these is how small these are. Here is a Primaris Marine. To kind of squeeze in there. I mean, Primaris mar Marines are kind of big anyway. But these guys are all hunched over and they're tiny. But to make up for that in detail. Now the amateur's mistake that I did make is not painting them. Well, it kind of has to do with painting them. But that's not it. It's something so dumb that I just... I had to I have to take my time, slow down, and spot things like this. And that is mold lines. I usually get every mold line off as best I can and I did with these guys I got a lot of them off but I missed a lot of them on the heads so if we focus on this guy for a second now you see the mole line on the right of his leg running the whole way down and then on the face he should have another one just below his or coming from his ear around the ear down the jaw and to the chin that's another mole line now I've only kind of copped now that they're painted that there's maybe Two of the guys like that, the rest of them I got them, but it's on the face, that's what pisses me off so much. So, and I kind of figured out how I missed them because I've been painting so much the last couple of weeks, is that I need to take a, I guess, I need to slow down a bit, not take a break, I need to slow down and double check everything as best I can. Because I like to have like a, some decent standard and more lines is like the first thing on the list, you know, get them more lines off, there's no reason for them to be there. But, anyway. These guys were a lot of fun to paint. They are full of details. Very fragile, as I said in the previous video. And um, they'll come off the base really easy if you just because they're hunched over, so they're kind of like when you're holding them, you're gonna hold them like that and you're gonna press down, and there's a good chance that they might pop off the base. So just be very careful with that. Um, I based them with Deckgar Green. I think that's one of the first times I've ended up using this paint, which was really cool, and I wasn't sure what highlight to use so what i did was um i put a shade of antonian camel shade over them that came out really nice and um, i did the fur with rhinox hide and then i did the bone with zandri dust all the metal small little metal parts like the hooks here on this guy you see him on his arm stuff like that that was all lead belcher the stones now some of the guys are holding stones uh, this guy has one he has a rock in his arm so hopefully you guys can see that little rock in his arm. Um, that was on with Mechanica Standard Grey. And then any kind of... Some of them have these kind of cloths over them. Well not cloths but like bandage wraps. I said wraps that's what it's going to be. Um, they have parts like that over them. This guy has one in his arm here. Tied one of the bones to his arm. That was done in Rackard Flesh. Um, so once... The Antonian camera shade was dry. I was thinking what could I put over that then to highlight it. And I could have highlighted individual parts. And I started doing that with the face. I think it's really prominent maybe with this guy. But there's one of them for definite that has like highlighted a lot more on his face. And I it just wasn't feeling right. So to kind of get that spooky effect of... Of like kind of a dark creature. What I did was I went over with a dry brush of screaming skull, and that I think it turned out really well, and um, because it gives them that kind of 
old horror movie look. I think that's a that's a great thing to have with these guys because that's what they remind me of, like old creepy horror movies. And um, so let me pick out one. This guy. Let's have a look at this guy. Yeah, so this guy, you can see it in his face. It's almost like a powdery look, which you can get off dry brush if you really want it. And it goes along his arms here as well. Giving him that old kind of eerie, spooky feeling, which I think I got on these guys. Which I kind of like. And I didn't want the highlights to be too strong. I wanted them to remain very kind of mysterious looking and spooky and everything. I didn't want highlights to pop off too much. But again, these were a lot of fun to paint. I wish I had have waited until I got the latest issue of Warhammer Conquest because they gave me, uh, or they give you camo, uh, one of the green colors, which would have been a really nice highlight color for him. Um, but I only got that now today, so maybe next time when I'm painting some worries, or I might even try it on some of the bigger guys. But overall, these guys were a lot of fun to paint, and I can't wait to do the guy for the painting tutorial. Alright, so that's it for this week's video. I enjoyed painting the Crypt Ghouls. They were a lot of fun to put together, as fragile as they are, and they were definitely a lot of fun to paint. So for next week's video, I'm going to be building up three of the Crypt Horrors. Now you get three Crypt Horrors and three Crypt Flayers. Now them kits can be built to either one or the other, or you can build them up as all Crypt Horrors or all Crypt Flayers. But I'm only building up three from the box because I want the other three for conversions down the line. So I think maybe I should start calling this series, let's half build the box maybe instead of let's build. But and I built these up before and I've painted them. They're really nice models. They're really big. They're like the big Hulk conversions of the Crypt Ghouls and I'm looking forward to putting together three more. So if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe if you haven't. And once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next video.